Hi guys and welcome to my Backpacking Central America recap. In this video, I will talk you through everything you need to know before backpacking Central America. I traveled from Panama to Mexico for four months, passing through every single country. I will talk about my itinerary, my cost breakdown, and so much more, but let's get started with some general information about the region. Central America consists of seven countries, and this does not include Mexico, technically. I've already spent eight months in Mexico, so I've made a completely separate guide about Mexico. And I've also already made a separate guide about Panama and Costa Rica, if you want to see a more in-depth guide of those countries. The majority of the population in this region is mestizo, which means that they are a mix of European and indigenous people. In almost all of these countries, Spanish is the official language except for Belize. In Belize, English is actually the official language. The region has a rich cultural history because it has been the home turf of the Mayans and the Aztecs. One of the biggest Mayan indigenous populations still lives in Guatemala today. They also have their own Mayan languages that have about 26 different dialects. It is also a very volcanic region which is nicknamed the Central America Volcanic Arc. There is a high amount of seismic activity in this region such as volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. I did experience an earthquake. I've experienced two in Mexico before, but this time around it was in Puerto Viejo in Costa Rica and usually they are harmless. I have visited some active volcanoes and a popular activity is to hike up these volcanoes and even sliding down active volcanoes on a sandboard. This was definitely one of my favorite days on my trip. Also, you are never further away from the ocean than 125 miles or 200 kilometers. The beach is always pretty close because the region is so narrow and sandwiched between the Pacific and the Caribbean coast. Along the Pacific coastline, the beaches are actually black from the volcanic eruptions and they are also very popular with surfers. Central America is part of the Mesoamerican Biodiversity Hotspot. It contains up to 7% of the world's biodiversity. The southern countries, Costa Rica and Panama, contain the most biodiversity, followed by Guatemala and Belize, with the central countries having the least biodiversity. But this makes Central America a popular destination for nature lovers and people wanting to hike and spot wildlife. The second largest coral reef in the world extends from Mexico all the way to Honduras. It is called the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef System. The Belize Barrier Reef is part of this. It is unlike anything I've ever experienced and I think back to it, every single day. So far they say that only about 10% of the species here have been discovered. Snorkeling or scuba diving in Central America is a must. I brought my own snorkel and I did not regret it. When visiting this part of the world, keep in mind that the drug trade is responsible for thousands of deaths in Central and South America. I don't want to make you feel bad, but I do want to make you think about where you are spending your money. And in my personal opinion, I do not want to be promoting or supporting any of those activities when I am traveling this region or any region. Central America is not very well known for its food. However, I loved it. Some of my favorites were the baleadas from Honduras, the pupusas, from El Salvador, rice and beans along the Caribbean coast and a lot of it also in Belize, the gallo pinto in Costa Rica, and obviously also a lot of Mayan influenced cuisine can be found in Guatemala and Mexico. I'm going to leave it at that for the general information. Now let's talk about actually traveling there. When should you go? Well, December to April is the dry season or the Central American summer even though there aren't really four seasons there. It is close to the equator, which means that it will be warm throughout the entire year and the temperatures don't really vary that much throughout the months of the year. It is a tropical climate and I legit experienced the hottest month of my life. As soon as I arrived in Nicaragua all the way up to Belize, I was sweating so much. I don't think I've ever sweat that much in my life up to the point where sometimes it was unbearable and we would avoid even doing anything during the 
hottest time of the day. Also in hostels you could find almost only cold showers. There simply were no hot showers because it was so hot outside. Mostly in Guatemala and Mexico you could find warm showers but in general a warm shower was really an exception. With this information in mind let's have a look at your itinerary. This was my route and it is commonly known as the Gringo Trail. I started in March in Panama and made my way north to Mexico. That way I could keep the rainy season behind me which was also slowly making its way from the south to the north. If you want to do the trip the opposite way from Mexico to Panama I would recommend starting closer to December to avoid getting stuck in the rainy season at the end of your trip. Definitely try to avoid September and October, which are the wettest months of the year. Also, you might be in for a hurricane. On your itinerary, you will be crossing many borders. No visa applications were needed in advance, but I would recommend paying the Costa Rica exit fee beforehand with this QR code so that you save $2, but you could easily do it at the border itself. Also, Nicaragua will require a $14 entry fee. Mexico, I believe a $35 entry fee if you are coming over land and Belize a $20 exit fee. An exit or entry fee is a very common thing and they usually don't cost the world. I'm actually thinking about making a separate video with all my tips about border crossings, so definitely let me know if you would be interested in seeing that video. I have a lot of tips and tricks. To enter any of the countries, your passport must be valid for at least six months and you must obviously have enough blank pages in your passport for the stamps. In Belize, you get a stamp that allows you to stay up to 30 days. In the CA4 group, which is a collection of four countries being Guatemala, Nicaragua, El Salvador and Honduras, they permit free travel in between these countries for 90 days. So you can divide those 90 days between those four countries and travel in between them freely. In Costa Rica, they allow you to stay up to 90 days at a time and in Panama, that number is even 180 days, half a year. However, after that 180 days, you need to wait at least 30 days before re-entering the country. Leaving the country in order to re-enter it and obtain a new visa is called a visa run. So in case you want to stay longer than the amount of days that is allowed, you will need to do a visa run. So for example, if you spent the 90 days in Costa Rica, you should pop over the border of Panama and then re-enter to acquire a new visa stamp. Within the CA4 group, you have to be careful because, for example, crossing from Honduras into Guatemala does not count as a visa run because both countries are part of this group. So from this group, you can do a visa run to Belize, Costa Rica, Mexico, but not within the group itself. I hope that makes sense. To enter a lot of these countries, you need an onward ticket, which proves that you will leave the country in time. But if I'm gonna be honest, nobody asked me at none of the borders if I had an onward ticket. I did have my ticket flying out of Mexico already, but I was never asked for it. However, when you go to Costa Rica, for example, by plane, they might not allow you on the plane if you do not have an onward ticket. And I believe you can go to onwardticket.com and for 10 euros, you get an onward ticket that's legit, but it gets canceled automatically. Another important thing is that you cannot take drones into Nicaragua and also for big camera lenses, you will need a very good explanation. I don't know what they think you'll be spying on, but yeah, they are very strict on those things. No drones at all. How you will get around in the country will depend on you. The most common options are public transportation, which will probably require a few connections and it doesn't really go direct. The buses can be very full. They also use chicken buses, which are old American high school buses. It is definitely an adventure to travel with public transportation. Another option, which will take you from place A to place B directly, is a shuttle. This option is a bit more expensive, but is also just simply more comfortable and less of a hassle. The downside of traveling overland in Central America is that there are barely no night buses. So you will be in a bus for hours on hours, mainly because the borders are only open from 6 a.m. so they can't really cross the border during the night. And this time the transportation really weighed on me, especially in Guatemala where it is so mountainous and it just seemed to take ages. So yeah, I did not enjoy the transportation as much as often 
as I usually do. I have also been in a fair share of tuk-tuks, ferries, and even these very strange bike taxis. So yeah, there are a lot of ways of getting around Central America. If you want to see how I get from place A to place B, I actually include it at the start of each video I make. So if you're wondering how do I get to La Fortuna, then check out my video about La Fortuna. Same goes for every single place that I have been. It's right at the start of the video. When arriving in a new country, I want to keep using my phone and data, especially when you're just arriving, you need to figure things out, find your way. So for me, it is very important as a solo female traveler who literally depends on her phone. So as soon as I arrive, I go to a local shop and I get a SIM card. In Guatemala, Honduras and Nicaragua, Tigo is a very popular one. In Belize and Panama, Digi or Digicel are the best options. And in El Salvador and Costa Rica, this will be Claro. I believe I also had a Claro SIM card in Guatemala. In Mexico, it's Telcel, by the way. If you don't want to buy a new SIM card and data plan each time you arrive in a new destination, which was a lot on this itinerary, then you can opt for an eSIM. And an eSIM does not require a physical SIM card, but it requires you to buy an eSIM in the app, I personally used Eralo. I did it for my Belize SIM card because the card itself cost $10 and by using the eSIM, I didn't have to pay that cost for the physical SIM card. So that made it more affordable for Belize specifically. If you just don't want the hassle of getting a new one every time you arrive in a new country, you can get one that is for the Latin American region. So it works across borders. You can use it in all the countries of Central America. It is more expensive, but it definitely makes your life easier. There are a few other useful apps that I use and the main one is going to be Hostel World. I use it to book my accommodation in hostels and it gives me a perfect overview of the best rated hostels and it makes it easy for me to choose the best value for money option and I can easily see if it fits my needs. I also use maps.me, especially when I'm arriving in a new country and I don't have the new SIM card yet, I won't be able to use Google Maps. So I can download the area that I will be going to or the country offline so that I can use it and orientate myself even without having data. It's good to have anyways, because I remember arriving in a flooded town in Mexico where all service was gone and I didn't have any way of getting to my hotel, that really sucked. And luckily the locals helped me out, but in that case, I would have loved to have my My Maps downloaded offline. Wow, okay, we have come a long way already, and I know it's been a lot of information so far, but I swear we're almost there. Let's talk money. This is what I spent in total for transportation, accommodation, activities, food, and in total each time also with an average daily cost. It is in euro, however, because that's how I calculate my costs and uh, my budget. So yeah, keep that in mind. You can see that El Salvador and Nicaragua are the most affordable with a daily budget of less than $40. Belize comes out as being the most expensive, but that is simply because I spent about $100 on extreme activities every single day, like very unique activities like diving the great blue hole, doing a snorkel tour on the Belizean barrier reef, swimming with manatees and sharks and turtles and it was just out of this world. So I decided to spend that money twice and I also went to the ATM caves, which is something you can't experience anywhere else in the world. So considering I think this money is completely justified. The cost in Honduras is also quite high, but that is because I did my advanced open water scuba certificate there and I was scuba diving pretty much every single day. So considering that, obviously, it's just the activities that made Honduras more expensive than the rest. Other than that, it's actually really affordable. Costa Rica and Panama are considered the most expensive countries, but actually I didn't spend more than $60 a day. If you've watched my Costa Rica travel guide, you will have seen all the ways that I tried saving money or budgeting really well. And I did do some crazy activities when diving, snorkeling, so much more. So overall, I think I did a good job on Panama and Costa Rica, even though it was more expensive than what I would usually spend per day in other countries. In Mexico, I spent 
most of my time on the Yucatan Peninsula, which is the most expensive part of Mexico. Visited the most remote archaeological sites, which makes the daily cost a bit higher. Compared to the trip that I did two years ago, where I spent two and a half months traveling all over Mexico, my daily average was only $40 or 36 euros per day. So yeah, you can't really compare Yucatan this time around with all of Mexico. Two more things to take into account is that every country has its own currency. The US dollar goes a long way, especially in Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador and Honduras where you can just generally pay with the US dollars. In Guatemala they only really take Guatemalan quetzales, Mexico the peso is also much more used and in Nicaragua the Cordobas were also more used. In Belize they have Belizean dollars and also general dollars. So yeah, you will be switching up currencies quite a lot, but definitely make sure you have some US dollars to get going because ATM fees, especially in Panama and Costa Rica, are quite high. Tipping is also a common thing in most of these countries, but don't worry about it too much in advance. As you go, you will quite quickly notice how much they expect you to tip in a restaurant. And although I hate to end things on a bad note or a negative note, I feel responsible to share the next thing with you guys. Nicaragua has been the country that I have felt the least comfortable in or the most uncomfortable in the entire world of all the countries I've visited. That is because the catcalling, especially in the cities like Leon and Granada, were just so over the top, constant and aggressive, that it made me even like stay in my hostel if I didn't have to go out to go on tours or something like that. Um, that's the level it was at, which says a lot because I am someone who has been so many places, I'm used to a certain level of catcalling and I have been traveling solo for the past two years now almost full time. It says a lot about Nicaragua and the cities. Outside of the cities it's not as bad but it really shocked me. Anyway, if you want to see all the things I did like and love, I have made maps of the countries with all my recommendations on it for accommodation, restaurants, activities, etc. Everything I've done you can see it both in the videos that I've made separately, there is a whole playlist of all the videos I've made in Central America and you can have a look at these travel guides with an interactive map. That is it for this video, I hope you liked it. If you did then definitely give it a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss my next adventure because as you are watching this I am now in Southeast Asia continuing my Southeast Asia trip. So if you want to join me on that adventure as well, subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!